Cut comb honey, one of the oldest and most natural way to eat honey. For the beginner beekeeper, it's the easiest and least messy way to produce honey, but it comes at a cost. Welcome to Rascal Apiary, and we're going to show you how we make comb honey. Before we get started showing you how we make comb honey, let's talk about why comb honey. What's, what's the importance of it and is it right for you? So it's easy to harvest if you have shallow and medium frames. You'll see here I have deep frames but these bees were just killing it this year and pulled these out all the way, completely capped over. Uh, we use foundationless frames so we can cut right through this. Uh, the other type of uh, way you could do this is have your shallow or medium frames and then put the wax foundation, it's a thin layer, it's not that bulky plastic because you can't cut through that and people can't eat plastic. But you use your shallow and your mediums, that makes it super easy and they'll produce the wax and the honey quicker because it's a smaller space. It doesn't take a lot of tools to harvest, you just need a knife, a cookie sheet, uh, some sort of rack to put the, the frame on, and then uh, something to store your cut comb in. So that's, that's pretty easy. And when you go to sell it at your farmer's market or to your customer, you can actually charge more for the cut comb honey than you would for a bottle of honey. There's very little cleanup to the cut comb honey. So now let's talk about why don't beekeepers sell it very often and it's because it's harder on the hive because you're taking these frames out and you're literally cutting out their resource their wax and their honey so when you then replace your frames they have to then pull everything out again and then find their resource again to store into the hive it's very hard on them but depending on the size of the hive it gives them something to do and as you'll see here I only pull a couple of frames out of this deep box for us to harvest and then I'll put that deep box back on and let them just pull the two or three frames back out this isn't gonna be as taxing on them as it would uh, if I had taken all of the frames and then put it back on and hope that they made more honey so let's talk about what I'm doing here um, I've just taken a bee brush and all I'm doing is flicking the bees off of the comb and that's the way you just use that bee brush. Um, this is a beginner beekeeper sort of deal so I'm, I'm not going to tell you use a, a blower to blow the bees out of the, the hive. You can do that um, if you wanted to get a bee escape you would just stick that under the super, leave it on the hive, stick it under the super, the bees would crawl out and would not be able to come back into the box and what that does for you is empties the box of bees so that you don't have to go through this of flicking bees off and walking from one spot to another i find it's best to walk over to an area flick the bees off and then move to a different area and flick the remaining bees all right make sure you have your area set up prior to pulling any boxes off you want to make sure you have a, a nice clean area that has a mason jar with really hot water, a sharp knife, cookie, cookie cutter sheet, spatula, and some sort of wire uh, grate to put your frame on so as you're cutting the honey can leak down. And as we're going to demonstrate here, you have your frame of honey. It should be 90% capped over. And as you can look at this frame, there is a portion that is not capped and we're still going to stick those in some cut comb uh, boxes, but that's going to be reserved for us because you don't want to run the risk 
of that honey uh, that being over you know 18% water content and then you sell it to somebody and it ferments you always want to keep a good appearance uh, to your customer so you're, you always want to put out high quality merchandise or products so what you can see here is we poured some hot water into that mason jar she dipped the knife in there makes it nice and hot and that way as we cut the wax it should reseal as long as she keeps that knife nice and hot she um, used the container to go ahead and map out where our squares are going to be and she's just giving them a quick cut it's going to let the honey drain down and then here in a minute we're going to cut the honey right out of the frame and you'll see her lift it right up and this is what you want you want to just be able to seamlessly pick up your frame and have your honey sitting right there ready to be put in a little box Now that we got the frame cut out, she's gonna clean up the sides and bottom of the frame. We're gonna leave that strip of wax at the top. That way when we put it back in, they have a little bit of wax foundation to start pulling out and it should pull out nice and straight in the way we want it. Uh, on the deep frames, we haven't really tested that. On the mediums and shallows, it works great. Some of the other tips that we learned while doing this is that the hot water made it very very easy to cut the wax however you have to look at both sides of the comb and remember what is capped and uncapped if you have a bigger frame if you have the smaller frames the shallow and the medium you don't really have to worry about it so much because they pretty much cap evenly on both sides uh, from what we've learned plus if you see one side that's not completely capped, you just leave it on for a couple more days and you're good to go. They'll cap it right off. So we don't typically run into sections of comb that are uncapped. And the next thing you got to remember is spread the, the squares out. Because as you do that, then the honey will leak into the cookie sheet. And when you're actually using your container or a cookie cutter remember to make the square sections or rectangle sections a little bit smaller than your actual container when we use the actual container to just kind of mark off where the the cuts need to be sometimes she cut on the inside and that comb would fit perfect into the box other times she kind of cut in the middle of the indentation and it was just fat enough to where if you push down it will it'll go in but the problem with pushing down is then that nice wax capping that you have on top that's nice and white starts to get saturated with a little bit of honey and almost kind of looks like um, you know wet paper so it's a little darker and when you're when you're trying to sell a product or you're going for a honey competition you want it to look really really nice and uh, symmetric and a good quality uh, appealing looking honey kind of like these guys you can see the wax cross cut there looks very nice you don't see a whole lot of honey dripping out along the top it looks like snow that's the type of capping that you want you uh, don't want to use old comb whenever doing this if you just happen to have a hive that really went gangbusters and then you have old brown looking comb 
and they've capped it over and you want to do cut comb honey and sell it that way uh, that that doesn't really work too well and it tastes a little funny at least to me if uh, you've done this before and you don't think it tastes funny or you have some thoughts about it leave it in the comments down below you may have noticed that she has a Tupperware off to the side uh, Pyrex glass that's full of just random scraps of honey that she took off of this frame those are the open cells ones uh, that we don't plan on selling so she just put it in the, the Pyrex glass there and the plan later is to just do some crushed honey with that and that way we can still get some honey out of it and not have any uh, not have to worry about selling it really you just want to make sure that you separate uh, the undesirable from the desirable and that that just kind of helps you'll see that we're moving on to our our next frame so that that frame even though this video is sped up uh, you know times two it really does not take that long to run through you know five ten frames of honey like this and it's just a nice afternoon kind of activity or even evening activity that you can do after a day of beekeeping so we uh, we cut all the edges all the way around we keep our knife nice and hot and then as she continues you'll see her use the the container as a little guide we of course leave the top portion of the frame on or the wax on there as a guide for the bees now you'll see that there, there's of course honey drip in there and that's because when we cut the top the those wax cappings get cut and then you know the cross section just drains honey out so just remember to let that drain into the cookie sheet below now you may be asking what do you do with the cookie sheet afterwards well, there's a couple of things. You can pour that honey into a jar if, if you want to keep it. You know you're going to use it in the next couple of days. You could also just go and put that tray outside. Now, we had a question on Twitter the other day um, about how far away should your honey feeders be from your hives. If you can do it, 300 feet is a pretty reasonable number uh, as far as distance so that you don't instill robbing. Now we've had feeders sometimes as close as 100 feet from our hives and it doesn't really cause that much of a problem as long as you keep feeding until the dearth is over. The minute that you let the containers go a day or two you'll see robbing happening in your hives and you you may think it's swarming or something else going on it, it's robbing and you can tell because as you do your inspection you'll have notes that says one week I have lots of capped honey and then the next week you'll go oh, okay they're eating it but they're not really eating it other bees are coming in and taking it but see how easy it is to cut these uh, squares you could just real quick boom 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 and then she'll cut the long way once she reached the end and then all she has to do is wait for those edges to to basically empty the cross cut cells and then it's ready to be put into a box. Now at the end of all this we'll put all of our cut comb honey into our boxes to be sold without putting labels on them. Put them into the freezer. Let them freeze for up to three days. That way if there's any sort of insects, creatures, undesirable anything in that comb it will kill it. Now, if, if you're trying to sell cut comb honey that has a giant worm in it, please don't. Uh, you're going to surprise your customer. Maybe give it to somebody you don't like, and then uh, they'll think you're being nice, and, and then they, they hit the worm. Kind of like the bottom of the tequila. Anyway, go ahead, freeze it for a couple of days, and then bring them out, let them defrost, and put labels on them. Uh, we have made the mistake before where we put the labels on first, put them in the freezer, and then the the labels don't they don't come out as nice and smooth as we would like they start getting bubbles in them and, and that's just because of the temperature change but that's pretty much how you do cut comb honey it's easy it doesn't require a whole lot of equipment but it requires a lot from your 
you know, hives. So as long as you got big booming hives, you're good to go. Thanks for watching. Leave some comments for us. Hit the like button. See you guys next week.